Hi, this video tutorial is going to show you how to use Snap Appointments to accept and manage appointments online. Right now we're on the login screen. As you can see, there's two sections, the business login section and the client login section. The business login section is for anyone who signed up for Snap Appointments to manage appointments. The client login section is for your customers or your clients. Once they've booked appointments with you, they can log in to view their upcoming appointments or to reschedule. So let's get logged in. The first section we're taken to is the dashboard. The dashboard is designed to show you information about your business at a glance. On the left hand side you can see the overview section where we have the time remaining till your next appointment, all events or appointments remaining today, and the events or appointments scheduled for tomorrow. We also show a list of all the upcoming appointments for today. Now because this is a demo account, a lot of information hasn't been added in here yet so there's nothing listed, but we'll fix that soon. On the right hand side there's a panel for your appointment trends which show you how many appointments have been booked this week versus last week so you can see if you're trending upward or downward based on the day of the week. And then last, lastly we have the new section which shows you information about our software and many messages that we want to communicate to you. Let's move on to the calendar section. The calendar section is probably where you'll spend most of your time. It allows you to view you or your employees availability by week or day or month. So let's go back to the default week view. Now there's no information in here yet as I mentioned before but there's a couple ways we can add an appointment or an event to the system. The first thing I should point out is the difference between an appointment and an event. An appointment is anything associated with a client or customer. So if you're scheduling something um, and you want an automatic email notification and a text message reminder to be sent out to the person you want to, you want to book a, a new appointment. If you're just adding anything, like a kid's birthday party or um, a, a break, um, or maybe you're going on vacation, you can add that as an event. An event blocks out time on your calendar, but it's not associated with any client. Let's go ahead and start with adding an appointment. I can click the Add Appointment button, or I can also click anywhere on the calendar where I want that appointment added. So as you can see, it defaulted to 12:19 at 1 p.m. I can also click over on Friday, and you can see that the date and the time has changed based on where I clicked on the calendar. The first field in here is the phone number field for your client or customer. If you know it, go ahead and ask for it or enter it. Um, otherwise, ask for it and put it into the system. So I'm just going to add something here. Now, because this phone number is not associated with a client record at all, it prompts me whether I want to add a new client or not. If I want to keep a record for this person, I'm going to go ahead and add a client and then type their name. We'll just call them test client. Um, I can also put their email address in here. Now the email address is required if I want automatic notification sent to their email, such as a confirmation email telling them that this appointment has been booked, and then also 30 minutes before their appointment they'll receive an email reminding them um, that they have an appointment to go to. So let's just enter something in here. The next field asks me which calendar I want to add this appointment to. So as you can see I have four employees here. Um, Carrie, Edward, Jessica, and Katrina. Let's go ahead and, this add the, and add this appointment to Jessica Jones' calendar. Now if you notice, the services automatically changed. Um, these are the services that are offered by Jessica, um, which you can manage in the settings area, but because Jessica only does three things, she has eye treatments, female haircuts, and male haircuts, the service field updated for those corresponding services. If I go to Katrina, you might see that there's different services added or available. Let's go back to Jessica and say we want a male haircut. Again, it's for 1223 at 1230 p.m. and the duration is 20 minutes. Now this field is automatically populated based on which service I, I choose. So as you can see it jumped to 30 minutes. Um, if I need to override the value here for any reason, I can go ahead and add it to the duration. Appointment notes, these are just reminders for me. So if I want to put something special here based on um, on, on my test client, I can, I can put a little reminder to myself which is going to show up in the calendar. If I say, for example, that I need to remember that this person likes a certain um, way I do the service or anything else, I can type that here. But let's just go ahead and put something arbitrary. I can also schedule a repeating appointment. So if this person comes in every day of the week at the same time or they come in once a month I can choose the repeat schedule so I could say I wanted this occur at the same time which would be um, Mondays at 1230 
um, every month and I wanted to go for the next four months, I could choose that here. But for right now, we're going to just go for the single appointment. I click the Save Appointment button and you can see the confirmation that the appointment was saved. And now the appointment appears on my calendar, taking up 20 minutes of, of my schedule. If I need to adjust this at any time, I realize that I accidentally clicked Friday instead of Monday, which I had I planned. You can just grab it and drag it over to the appropriate time. It's going to prompt you whether or not you really want to move this because you might need to notify the person um, that you booked with that this, this event has been modified. But let's go ahead and hit continue um, to lock it into place. I can also adjust the duration. So if I want to extend this out longer in my calendar, I just simply grab the bottom and drag it to the end duration or the end time that I want. Click continue and then it's automatically locked into that new, um, that new time slot.